Hey guys, that was the sun in the way. Oh well, I don't have to worry about that. From the road, got uh, another video request uh, from Zach. And Zach is in a great position, I'll read it here for you. Currently 23 and working as a network engineer, uh, deploying and maintaining large amounts of router switches, firewalls, etc. I dropped out of junior college to take up this job, it worked pretty well, and I am now making well over $80,000 per year. Yeah, I think it's working out pretty well. I don't know a lot of 23 year olds who dropped out of JC and end up making 80 grand a year. You, you did it right. So. Presently, I'm working on pulling down my CCIE certification that will likely net me an annual salary of $120,000 per year by the age of 24, 25. To put it aptly, I'm conflicted. I want to go back to school to pull down some arbitrary IT-related degrees so that I can join the Air Force as an officer via ROTC. What this decision ultimately boils down to is adventure versus money. The Air Force provides a good amount of benefits, one of which being the ability to travel. However, the pay isn't nearly as good as what I'm willing uh, will be getting in the coming years working as a network engineer. In your videos, I've noticed a trend wherein you advocate living life for yourself. At present, I'm trying to fit that motif to my current situation. Does living for myself entail being a wage slave, bouncing from one corporate entity to another over the years in a desperate bid to acquire enough capital to hire at some early age? Uh, and then basically, you know, what do you do? Uh, well, here's the thing. Uh, you really... What you're facing, you know, make a man, to make a man miserable, give him choices, and that's unfortunately you have you have a good problem to have, uh, and so, but you know, what's the best thing? It really does depend, but uh, appreciate the situation you have now. You make eighty grand a year. I've never made eighty grand in a year. I I've, I've, I've worked six months at a, a rate of a hundred thousand a year, but I never stayed long enough on the job. And it seems like you got the knack for doing this computer networking stuff. Uh, when you go into the military, though. Um, your, your biggest concern, as I'm sure you're well aware, especially in IT and, and this computer networking stuff, you got to keep your skills fresh. I mean, you got to be on top of the latest routers, the latest uh, uh, bandwidth, whatever. And if you go into the military, you run the risk of not being at that at that edge and losing your edge. Now, that being said, <clears throat> if you aren't happy working eighty thousand dollars a year and you don't have family you don't have kids you don't have any major responsibilities you could afford to go into the air force and you'll still make decent money i mean it's not like you know it doesn't take that much to feel the guy in the in, in life uh, and you get free food clothing shelter everything and your education so um uh don't you know it, it's not like if you join the air force you're not going to have any money either the question is how much do you how much money do you actually need now <clears throat> what I recommend is both because why don't you just join the Air Force Reserve or the Air National Guard? You don't have to commit full-time uh, You'll still get to go into the Air Force and this way you get to try both you work full-time doing a computer networking gig You don't give up that uh, Reliable paycheck and that reliable career, but then you also get to test out the military and who know you know You think you may want to join the military you think you may want to get into the Air Force It may suck you may absolutely hate it and you say oh god Why did I give it up the other thing with the Air Force and the military in general is I think they'll hire you it, it, it depends you'd have to talk to a recruiter Some more knowledgeable. I don't think you necessarily need a degree to become an officer um you have such a skill, they might uh, give you a promotion officer anyway. Uh, but <clears throat> before you get your degree, why not join the reserves and then have them pay for it? In other words, you, they're not a mutually exclusive decision. It's not money or adventure. It's you could do both. And then if you find out the military wasn't what you thought it was going to be, you do your two or three years there, you, you, get, you get your stint and you, you, then you don't join again or re-up. Uh, or you find out, gosh, this was your true calling, and to hell with the money. Uh, and then on top of it, in the military, they do need a uh, network engineers. They need computer networkers. So I don't know if your skills would necessarily decay or degrade. Then you do your 20 years in the military, you get your pension, uh, and then assuming you've kept up with it and you've uh, uh, maintained your skills, you just go back into the private market or government work or contract work and become a computer engineer again. So um, yeah, that's what I'd recommend is, you know, check into uh, whether or not they need
computer networks, as I assure you, they do. You could maybe even start as a lieutenant, given your experience and, and what some college you do have. Uh, start easy, start just part-time, do the reserve or the, uh, or the Air National Guard, and that will tell you for sure whether or not you want to commit fully to the military and get rid of the, the networking career, or you could probably do both. So that's all I got. And, but, <laughs> oh, one other thing. <clears throat> if you want to adventure and travel, you have the money. You don't need to join the military. Um, and uh, with 80 grand a year, soon to be 120, yeah, you can you could go wherever you want. You can afford a trip to China. Um, I think you're all right. So uh, it doesn't have to be military adventure. It can be adventure adventure. So, toodles.